Governor Natembe is a man whom, in my opinion, enjoys playing with fire and one day he will receive his dividends. In this video, I want us to discuss why Kenya Kwanza will turn on George Natembe after the 2027 elections because the shocking thing here is that he thinks he's safe, but he's not. And before we get into that, if you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button, and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Now, the first reason why I believe Natembea's goose is going to be cooked after 2027 elections is because Raila Odinga had an ODM candidate in Transoya County called Moses. And he told Moses to stand down for George Natembea of DAPK party. In fact, he's the image of the ODM candidate handing over to Natembea on stage under Raila's oversight. Now, once Natembea became governor, he betrayed Raila. He boycotted all Azimio meetings and never attended even one Mandamano. Today, Raila is slowly sneaking into government like he usually does. Does, and if there is one thing we know about Raila, he never forgets his enemies. After Miguna got deported to Canada, he started insulting Raila after he got into a handshake. And what did Raila do? He refused to add Miguna's return to Kenya to the negotiation table. He basically left Miguna to rot out there in Canada. Now I can only wonder what Raila will do to Natembea now that he has cozied up to the president and the prime cabinet secretary. Second reason why Kenya Kwanza is likely to turn on George Natembea is the fact that Natembea used to arrest Ruto allies like MP Joanna Ngeno under the orders of then president Uhuru Kenyatta. In fact, here's what Ngeno had to say about this not too long ago. Siwezi bila ku kutaja kidogo kuhusu huyu governor wa area hii nilikuwa natarajia tukutane na yeye kwa mali nyingine ambayo sio kanisa kwa sababu huyu jamaa aliniteza sana huyu mtu wenu huyu aidhuru ipo siku tumekutana tu kwa kanisa lakini kwa sababu bishop alikuwa amesema tusalamiane ile ya mapenzi aidhuru ipo siku yako huyu jamaa alinifunga mara sijui tisa huko Narok Kuna hata ya mwisho aliniweka kwa langrusa na ilikuwa usiku na ilikuwa inanyesha na na kukuwa na ema kwa hiyo langrusa. Nilipofikishwa na kuru saa kumi, saa kumi ya subui. Askari karibu alia, kaniuliza bado huko hai, nikamuambia mimi niko hai. Mimi bado ndaishi, baka nione hii serikali ya ruto imepita. Kwa hivyo, natembea, wewe siku yako itakuja. Asandeni mungo. And the sad thing for natembea is that he is still very proud about arresting President Ruto's allies. Till date, he's still thumping his chest about the arrest of Joanna Ngeno. Roll the tip. Kuondoa watu, mimi niliondoa watu mau. Umeona huyu mheshimiwa Ngeno? Amesema nilimshika mara tisa. Anasema nilimshika, lakini alisahau kidogo nilimshika mara 18. Ila alisema kwamba aliwekwa kwa 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 lorry kwa kwa land cruiser usiku. Sasa siku hiyo ndio alirudi chini kidogo. Maana tumewa kwa land kurusa, tukapitia kwa hiyo kwa forest kule bometi na indaka baka karibu, baka karibu na akuru. Wakuna mutu kwa hiyo barabara. Taza alikuwa tu yeye na askari na mweshimiwa ngeno aliokoka usiku uo. Ile maombi ambayo alitoa. Na kusema hata isi yasa hata wacha. Kama hata kufa wache bibi. Kama hata wacha bibi. Soon this guy will be humbled. Third reason why I believe Natembea's goose is cooked. As we speak, Natembea is at loggerheads with his senator, Sang. Who's Sang? Sang is a William Ruto ally. And that is part of the reason why Natembea has been complaining that he has no audience at all with the president. Anytime he wants to see President Ruto, he has to go through several brokers to get to the president. Yet Sang and people like Sudi can call the president direct. So Sang is another person that Natembea has seriously annoyed. And fourth on the list, Governor Natembea's boys roughed up the Speaker of the National Assembly, Wetangula. Here's the tip. Wetangula has since kept quiet, but trust me, he hasn't forgotten. After 2027, this man will begin paying for his arrogance. You know, the problem with Natembe is that he thinks the president, the deputy president, the prime cabinet secretary, and CS Kindiki are pleased when they see the speaker of the National Assembly getting roughed up by his boys in Transoya County. You know, for now, they are kind of tolerating his uh, behavior because they need him. Politicians are very tactical. They will tolerate you for as long as they need you. Look at Uru Kenyatta. How many people betrayed him? 
They were with him until they no longer needed him, they jumped onto William Ruto's camp. After Ruto exits politics, there will be others who will jump from his team to Rigathi's team or Mudavadi's team or Kalonzo's, whoever is going to win. That is how politicians are. So the only reason they are keeping Natembea close to them, Chris Wamalo has left, he's slated to become a CAS, and so they need Natembea to deliver the vote of Transoia County. After 2027 is when they will no longer need him and is when he'll start atoning for his sins. Trust you me, you cannot attack the Speaker of the National Assembly, and even worse, everyone in the country is quiet. The President has not commented, the DP, the Prime Cabinet Secretary, CS Kiture Kindiki, they are all quiet. They are just waiting after elections. So this guy, in my opinion, is not very wise. You cannot betray Raila and come and start attacking people in Kenya Kwanza. Where will you have your footing? In politics, you need to have a foundation. Where will you have your footing? If you want to play independent politics, whereby you are not in Kenya Kwanza, you are not in Azimio, that's fine, but but it requires you not to be an aggressor. You cannot become an aggressor towards Azimio, an aggressor towards Kenya Kwanza. Who will help you when your day comes? We saw how Sonko was manhandled in Nairobi by the Uru Kenyatta administration. So we know that the national government has the power to humble any governor anywhere. This is very dangerous politics from Natembe and I wish he would wise up sooner rather than later. That's just my opinion, guys. Do let me know your own comments in the comment section below. Do you agree with the politics of Natembea? Do you think uh, he knows something that we don't or is he generating his own downfall? Do drop me your own comments. I'll do my best to read them and to give you a response. Now, in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button. You're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. All right, guys. Adios. Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adios.